Okay, so just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to comfortably relax, I'm just going to tell this sleep meditation in the background. And this is a sleep meditation about a young girl. And one day, this young girl is out walking in the countryside. And she lives on a farm. And she's walking across the countryside, heading back towards the farm. And as she walks, so she can hear the sounds of birds in the trees. She can hear the sounds of some birds overhead. She can see a circling bird of prey over the fields. Occasionally lowering down, hovering, before flying higher in the sky and continuing to circle. And she continues her walk through the countryside, back towards her farm. And as she walks, hearing the sound of the rustling leaves of the trees, in the woodland behind her, seeing the way the grass sways across the fields as the wind blows a breeze, feeling that breeze on her cheeks, the movement of her clothes. She really enjoys the peace of the day. And she follows a path through this countryside, over some undulating hills. And the sun is beginning to get lower on the horizon, just a few hours from setting. And near the gate to the farmland, she sees this man sat on a post. And this man's playing some kind of a stringed musical instrument just gently plucking away at that musical instrument, as if plucking the instrument in time with the sounds of nature. And as she walks past that man with a sense of familiarity and curiosity for him, he looks up towards her, and he says that he's got something for her, that he's been sat here waiting for her to walk by, and that he didn't know that he was waiting for her specifically until he saw her approaching. And he hands her a small bag of pebbles, like a little pout of pebbles, and he tells her that as she walks back to her farm, she's to go and walk into the barn, and while she walks into the barn, she's to take those pebbles with her, and every ten steps from that barn back towards her home, she's to drop a pebble behind her. And she's confused by this, but takes the pebbles and heads into the farmland. And off in the distance, she can see the top of the barn and she walks towards the barn. And as she arrives at the barn, so the sun is beginning to set. 
the shadows are stretching across the ground. Birds are quietening down. She walks into that barn, turns around, and as she walks back out of the barn, she follows those instructions. Every ten steps, she takes one of the pebbles, drops it down behind her, continues walking. Ten steps later, she drops another pebble. Ten steps later, she drops another pebble. Ten steps later, she drops another pebble. And as she walks, methodically, dropping those pebbles behind her as she goes, so she feels this sense of peace, of calmness, a sense of inner serenity. almost a connection to the world around her, as the sun is almost fully set over the horizon, and she's almost at her home. And as she arrives home, so she finds that she's dropping the last pebble from that pouch. And she's curious how there were exactly the right number of pebbles to drop between the barn and her home. And she enters into her home, relaxes down at home. She has something to eat, reads a book for the evening and then heads to bed. And as she drifts comfortably asleep, so she begins to dream about waking up, getting out of bed, walking downstairs in a quiet house, walking out the back of the house, into the conservatory at the back of the house, gazing out over the dark garden, seeing those stars twinkling overhead, noticing some fireflies darting among the trees at the end of the garden, and then having this sense almost like those fireflies have somehow noticed her and frozen in space as if to not be seen. But as she remains motionless gazing out over the garden, after a few moments they go back to flying like normal. And then, out of the darkness in the garden, she notices a shadow that, as it gets closer, begins to become more observable. That, as it gets closer, she notices is a white unicorn and it comes out of the darkness as a shadowy figure, and then clearly a unicorn approaching the house. And it comes up to the conservatory doors, it lowers its head, and hanging on its horn, she can see a necklace, and so she opens the conservatory door, takes that necklace off of the unicorn's horn, the unicorn then raises its head, 
and as it raises its head, so she feels its breathing, its warm breath on her body. As she stood near its head, with its head slightly higher than her shoulder. And she takes a step back into the conservatory, closes the door, watches as that unicorn turns, heads back into the darkness and disappears. She then has this sense of heading back to bed. And the next morning she awakens, gets out of bed, gets some clothes on, heads down, stairs, for breakfast. And as she arrives for breakfast, and is eating her breakfast, her mum asks her where she got the necklace. It's only at this point that she realises she has that necklace from her dream hanging around her neck. And she says that she found it, but doesn't know any other way to explain. And after breakfast, she heads out of the house and notices the strangest thing that following those pebbles between the home and the barn seems to be a purple force field or a purple light stretching from the ground up high into the sky. And she tries to walk across that purple light, reaching out to touch the purple light and finds that it feels like a smooth barrier. And she can't walk around that purple barrier. The purple barrier goes all the way to her front door. And so she heads in to the home again. And she tries to go out the back door and then walk around. And as she walks around the house, she finds that she's on the other side of the barrier. Only on this side of the barrier, there's something unusual about this land. She can see flying overhead a dragon. that just seems to be flying through the sky, then disappearing off into the distance. She can see that purple barrier, she can walk up to it, she can touch it, and it has that same soft, smooth feeling. And she can see that the other side of the barrier the other side of this purple force field looks normal, exactly as she remembered it from moments ago when she was around there. Whereas this side, it's almost like she's in a different place. And she wonders how the two lands are separated that she can tell the lands are separated by this purple barrier. But she was able to walk around the barrier. So she followed her way round the garden, heading round the back of the garden, to see if there's a point between one land and the other to see if she could walk right around the outside of the house 
around the outside of that garden, all the way round to the other side of the barrier, without ever going inside. But she finds as she arrives at the barrier that she's still in that strange land. And she heads back round in through the back garden, in through the back of the house, walks through the house, comes out the front door, and finds that she's in her normal world and can see looking through that purple barrier that that over there looks like that strange land. And she decides to repeat her experiment. She walks from this side of the purple barrier, around the outside of the house, around the outside of the garden, all the way round to the other side of the purple barrier. And on arrival on the other side of the purple barrier, she finds that She's still in her normal land. There's no dragons here. There's nothing unusual here. That something about walking out the front door and being on one side of that barrier versus walking out the back door makes it so that you discover one land or the other. And she was curious about this land and curious about why this purple barrier is here. The purple barrier seems to follow the path of pebbles that she laid the night before from the barn all the way to the front door. And so she walked out the front door, walked along the edge of that purple barrier, all the way to the barn. And at the barn, she walked around the barn and found that as she walked around the barn, so she was still in her normal land just the other side of the purple barrier. And so she walked back around the barn again and walked through the barn. And as she walked through the barn and then opened a small exit at the back of the barn, she noticed that exit opened to this strange land where she could see that dragon flying overhead. And she wondered what was going on, wondered whether this was even real. And she was surprised at how quiet the land appeared. There didn't seem to be any sounds of birds singing. The air seemed incredibly still. She could see a unicorn grazing off in the distance, wondered whether it was the same unicorn from her dream the night before and whether it was even a dream, or whether perhaps she'd woken during the night, gone downstairs, gone out the back door, into this unusual land, and then just interpreted it as a dream. And then she could see that person that she saw the day before, sitting on a post on the edge of the field 
in this unusual land. And so she walked over to that person, and they told her that there was something of a wizard, something of a fortune teller, and that they traverse the realms between one reality and another. And she had taken those pebbles and laid the right number of pebbles down to allow a barrier to form where both realities, where two of these realms, could coexist side by side. with gateways between the realms, where the barrier forms a gateway at both ends, and passing through those gateways, you come out in one realm or the other, and that her help was needed, that she's small and capable of being able to travel into places that he can't go. And he wasn't sure whether she would help. So he wanted to see if she would follow some instructions and be willing to engage. And he gave her those pebbles, and she laid down those pebbles. He then wanted to see if her curiosity would lead to her being willing to explore the unknown. Whether her mindset would enable her to try to work things out, try to work out what's going on, and solve puzzles. And she had done all of these things. She'd laid the pebbles. She had explored this alternative reality. She had visited the reality despite seeing a dragon and revisited that reality. And so he's now confident that she would voluntarily engage in a quest through this land. And this wizard jumped down off that post and walked down a path and the girl followed down that path. And the wizard explained while they were walking about this land, about it being almost a mythical land by normal land standards, that here you can find giants, dragons, fairies, unicorns, all sorts of creatures others would see as mythical. But there's one thing that the wizard needs help with. That a spaceship had crashed in this realm. And the way the spaceship had crashed was from the future into the past. 
And the only way to be able to change that future is to change the past. To enable that spaceship to avoid crashing. And the girl didn't really understand. But the wizard said that this crash happened a long time in the future and an even longer time in the past. And so the wreckage of the crash is deeply buried and there's a path to the wreckage but they are too big to traverse it. That they have specific powers and abilities. But as with all wizards, they can't use those powers on themselves. And in this land, there are no humans. There are many mythical creatures. But any creature which is inherently magic can't be influenced by the magic of others. And so they've been unable to get anyone to be able to go to that wreckage, to be able to change the course of the future. That in changing that course, would allow an improved connection between these two realms. There are crossover points through time and space. But at some point in the future, one of those crossover points opens up in space, just as a spaceship is passing over. And that spaceship passed through that crossover point. And as it came in towards the earth, it ended up not picking up any of its usual signals, not picking up signals to guide it safely to the planet. Because it was approaching the planet in a different realm and thousands of years in the past. And so it crashed and has lay there crashed until now when the wizard has met this young girl and knows that she may be the one to be able to help. That over those thousands of years they've been waiting for someone who could help. And the girl heads with that wizard to the location of that crashed spaceship. And on arrival at that crashed spaceship, the girl looks around and the land appears fairly normal, apart from what almost looks like a small rabbit hole leading down into the ground. And this wizard says that they can shrink the girl down so that she can enter that hole 
than they can make it, so that she'll grow back to being her normal size once she's in the hole. But when she grows back to being normal size, she can do so by saying a secret word to herself that will not only bring her back to her normal size, but it will give her what she will perceive almost as superpowers. And that as she's down there with those superpowers, so she'll be able to turn back time. And as she turns back time, so she'll be able to turn back time for that ship. And she'll be able to guide that ship back into space. By turning back time while watching as that ship reverses from the ground back up into the sky back out into space, back through that rift. And he teaches her a specific word, which he says will seal the rift. That these rifts spontaneously occur, and normally spontaneously occur on earth. But for some reason that one had occurred in space, just for a few moments, but at the wrong time. And that if she can send that spaceship back through that rift, say that word, she'll watch as that rift seals up. And then, in the spaceship's own time, as soon as that rift is sealed, time for those in the spaceship will travel forwards again, as if nothing has happened from that moment forward. And the spaceship will pass right past where the rift would have been, perfectly fine and safe all saved without even knowing that they had been saved, because the bit of their future that had happened in the past won't have happened. And so the girl gets taught those words, and she heads down through that hole, walking deeper and deeper underground, looking around her, intrigued by the sight of the inside of what almost looks like a rabbit hole. But to her, it's like walking through a large cave, as she has shrunk down to the size of a mouse. And after some walking, going deeper and deeper underground, she comes out in a large chamber where she can see that crashed spacecraft. And she reverses time as she changes back to her normal size. And as she reverses time, so the mud level shrinks down around her, suddenly finding herself thousands of years in the past, with this land looking as it did back then. And that spacecraft rises from the ground, reverses back up into the sky, flies backwards 
floats around the planet into space. She sees it as it heads backwards approaching that rift in space and watches as it passes backwards through that rift. She then says the magic word, watches as that rift closes. And then to her it's as if she's just there in this world, seeing the environment, as time moves forward again, but nothing is happening, that rift doesn't reappear, she can see different creatures around her, but everything moves forward, without that rift reopening. She then says a word that changes time, and notices as time starts to move forward. Only this time, the ground isn't building up around a spaceship. The ground is just gradually building up. So as time moves forward, so she has to climb up onto the land as it's beginning to grow around her. Until eventually she sees that wizard approaching and walking over to this spot. And time slows down, goes back to normal, and ticks along at normal speed. And this wizard says, you seem to look familiar. I had this sense that I should be here for some reason. But I don't really know why. I had this sense that I needed to meet you, but I don't recognize you or know who you are. And the girl is stood there wearing that necklace, looking back at that wizard, curious at how they don't seem to know or recognize her. And the wizard says that they felt some kind of a connection. That there was something about that necklace that they were thinking of. They just felt they were supposed to meet the girl wearing that necklace in this location at this exact time. And that they had grown up being told that's what they were to do, with no knowledge of why, and the girl realised that somehow a connection had been created, that this wizard must have created in that alternate reality where that spaceship was still crashed there. That this wizard must have created before sending her down that hole to change the reality that somehow connected perhaps the old reality with this new reality via this necklace that this wizard had no reason to be here or to call upon this girl for help when there was no spacecraft crashed here. But the reason there's no spacecraft crashed here is because this wizard had called upon this girl for help 
And so there was a catch-22 situation. By calling on the girl for help, they resolve the spacecraft issue. By resolving the spacecraft issue, there's no issue to have grown up needing help with to call upon that girl. So they don't call upon the girl for help, so there's a spacecraft issue which needs the girl to help. And that to resolve this paradox, the wizard must have done something to connect one reality with the other, perhaps using this necklace. Almost like a bridge between the old and the new. And so in this new reality, they grew up with no memory of what had happened, yet the girl had memories of what she had done. For her it was one continuous experience. From her house to this land, down that hole, changing time, changing time back. And being back here was all one long, continuous experience. And so she was able to have a sense of her reality as it had been experienced. Which was different to the real reality as others had experienced. And she didn't know where in the future that spacecraft had come from. She was confident that it had come from some time after her own time. Because she's sure she would have heard of it if a spacecraft had gone missing. And the wizard was curious to hear her story. Had been curious for many years about this story passed down through the wizard's family generations, passing down this one message about being here at this time to meet this girl in a necklace. About having to give this girl some pebbles. And somehow the whole thing had worked out. And one thing that the girl had noticed as this wizard gave her some pebbles, which she thought to herself, you've given me some like that before, was that that purple barrier was no longer there. Did in this reality, the wizard hadn't previously given her pebbles. That her house wasn't there, the barn wasn't there, she was just here, in this mythical land. And the wizard gave the girl those pebbles and told her a location to walk to and told her to place them every ten steps, just drop one every ten steps as you walk from that location to this other location that was marked on the ground and the wizard didn't know or understand why or what any of that meant that they knew that they could travel between one reality and another and they knew that the locations were between what was the edge of the barn 
and the front door of a building. And the girl went and walked along and dropped those pebbles as she walked. But as with before, as she could remember, nothing happens just because there are pebbles there. She had to sleep on it. And it was the next day when there was that purple force field, that purple barrier between the realms that she was able to walk around and head from one realm to the other. And she didn't know how long that purple barrier lasted. Did it last a day, a week, a month? Was it always there, once placed there? She wondered whether she was the only one that could see it, or whether, when her parents leave home, walking out the front door, do they see this purple barrier as well? She was curious she hadn't considered that or thought about that previously. But she was aware that the barrier most likely wouldn't appear until nightfall, and she wondered whether her parents would wonder where she was. And the wizard said that they can turn back time for her. They can turn back time to the day before, so that the stones that she's placed are placed essentially the night before, as she had placed them before. And so that's what the wizard did. They turned back time. So this way, she'd be laying those pebbles the day before. And then overnight, she would be in her normal reality. Going to bed, her parents knowing where she is. While in this reality, she is here. And then in the morning, that barrier would appear. And in the normal reality, that's when she would explore and travel across from one reality to the other. And in this reality, she can travel back across to the other reality so that to her parents, it'll be as if she's just nipped outside. And no time has elapsed. And yet to her, she spent a day here. And so time is turned back. Those pebbles are laid. And then she goes and sits near a campfire, near a lake and waterfall in this land. And while sitting there as the sun sets here in this land, she can hear the sound of twinkling and sparkling and sees something rising from around the base of the waterfall that's pouring into the lake. And the wizard says, that's just the waterfall fairies. And they wake up as the sun sets. They leave the water and they fly and do their errands at night, lighting their own way as they go. And she watches as they dart around, almost looking like fireflies in the distance. And then she sees a unicorn coming over towards them out of the darkness. 
and as that unicorn nears them, the wizard cools it over. He takes a necklace from the inside of his cloak. He hangs that necklace on the horn of the unicorn. The girl recognizes and touches the necklace around her neck, realizing they're the same necklace. The wizard says, go and give this to the girl. And that unicorn heads off. And seems to fade into the darkness. She recognizes that, that unicorn is going to be arriving at the back of her house. And that it wasn't a dream. She must have woken during the night for some reason and headed downstairs and out to where that unicorn was. And the wizard and the girl sit by a campfire that's crackling away, the light dancing, feeling the warmth of this environment. And she drifts and floats asleep for the night, while that wizard just seems to sit there cross-legged, gazing at the fire. And the next morning she awakens, sees the fire has burned down to embers. She heads away from the lake, she heads back towards where her home should be. She sees that purple barrier. She walks down to the end of the purple barrier, finds the way through into the back of the barn, heads through the back of that barn, out the front of the barn, and she sees herself over there coming out of the front door. And she ducks down and hides. And keeps just out of view as she watches herself explore the barrier. Watches herself head back into the home. Waits and waits and then sees herself eventually coming around the side of the building. Sees herself heading to the barn, watches as she walks through the barn, and knows that she's going to be heading through the barn, and having the adventure she's just been on. And after she has passed through that barn, the girl comes out from hiding, walks back to her house. Her mum says, oh, you weren't gone long. As the girl says, that she just wants to go and lie down for a little bit. She's quite tired already. And she heads up to bed. And she lies on her bed just for a little while, to rest her eyes. She drifts to sleep for a short while, has a few hours of a nap, before waking and heading down and outside. But when she heads down and outside, so she notices that that barrier has disappeared. She notices that the stones have disappeared. And she realizes that the realities must have shifted. That now must be the time when she's headed down, changed history, changed the past and the future 
which has changed the present. Meaning that she was never given those stones. And so by not laying those pebbles, there was no barrier. And she finds this a curious experience. And wonders whether there's ever a point in the future where she's going to be able to see that mythical realm again. And as she turns to head into the front door again, she sees a rock by the front door. And it looks curious and placed on purpose. She picks up that rock, and underneath the rock, she sees a note that just says, Thank you. We'll meet again. She places that rock down and heads back into the home. She relaxes, reads a book, enjoys her day. And at the end of the day, she heads to bed, thinking about the experience she's had over what to her is about two days. And while thinking about that, and curious about what else might be in that alternative realm, she drifts and floats so peacefully, so comfortably, asleep all night long.